So we've started recording the webinar. Uh, good afternoon, everybody, or good morning, depending on where you are, potentially good evening. Uh, my name is Jonathan Parkinson. Uh, I work for Oxfam, uh, and I am currently Senior WASH Program Development Advisor based in the UK. Uh, today we have a presentation which is primarily delivered by two consultants who have been working with us uh, on a project which is funded by USAID's OFTA. Um, and the focus of our project over the past couple of years has been investigating, uh, piloting and developing uh, approaches for market analysis focusing on the WASH sector and um, resultant market-based programmatic interventions in a number of countries. Uh, the, the focus countries that we've been working in are Indonesia and Bangladesh, South Sudan, uh, Zimbabwe, and our, our colleagues ACF have been focusing their activity in Haiti. Uh, so we have a number of uh, outputs forthcoming for those particular country activities. Um, and one of the one of the areas which was identified at an early stage uh, was on monitoring and evaluation. So this webinar is essentially focusing on monitoring and evaluation of um, WASH-based interventions in emergencies. There is a particular focus, as you will see, on market-based interventions, um, but the market and, and evaluation framework was developed in a way to, to be flexible to be applicable not only to market-based programming, but also to um, traditional WASH interventions. Sorry, just next page. Uh, so our agenda, um, we have three parts to so the webinar. Uh, I will give a few um, words of introduction and then hand over to Ruzika uh, Jakimovic and Christoph Burston, who are the two consultants representing Flownet and Monitoring for Change, and they are the ones who have um, been working on this um, activity. Um, we've had uh, a lot of interaction both with WASH practitioners with in Oxfam and out of Oxfam, um, and also quite a lot of engagement with markets people with more of a market focus who are not so much focused on WASH um, because we realize that this is a, an area which um, is, a, is challenging for other sectors as well. Um, so after the introduction, we will have a presentation about the generic framework itself um, and the indicators and methods of measurement for um, applying the framework. So that's very much at the heart of, of the work and this presentation. And then following on from that, we will then have a presentation um, which will show how the framework can be applied uh, using two uh, tools, a survey CTO tool, which is to help collect um, data for the market analysis. Um, and that then feeds into the Power BI. Um, so um, our consultants will present to you um, those applications as part of this webinar. Um, so uh, yeah, we have 35 people attending now, so welcome to you all. Thank you for your time today. Um, and we have, I believe, up to an hour and a half maximum for the presentation and webinar. If you have, I, th I believe we, I think we have questions after the end of the generic framework um, presentation, and then at the end after the presentation about the um, ICT tools, the survey CTO, and then Power BI. Um, so we just very briefly um, market-based approaches. We're looking at commodities, namely goods and services, um, working with market actors. Um, and to help enable them to be the key providers of critical goods and services during emergencies. A lot of our activity in the countries that I mentioned has been on pre-crisis market mapping analysis and subsequent market uh, programmatic activities to help strengthen preparedness 
uh, and resilience of markets prior to emergencies. We've had some experience of market-based interventions in emergencies themselves, um, but primarily our work has been about pre-crisis market mapping and analysis. Uh, the work that the consultants have done um, is, a, is a framework which can span across a range of initiatives, either pre- or post-crisis. So, um, and, and very much this is about how to develop a standardized approach which can, can be applicable for market-based programming to help collect evidence um, about the strengths and weaknesses of this approach. That's really very, very much what this is all about. Um, so the objectives essentially of this framework about um, or, or market-based programming more generally is about efficient and effective delivery of critical and essential wash uh, goods and services. Uh, the framework is about assessing impacts of market-based programming and comparing, as I mentioned, comparing market-based programmatic approaches with conventional approaches. Um, and, and, and under that, lying that is, is a need to assess gen, gender and socioeconomic discrepancies. So who is this aimed at? This is really aimed at uh, WASH programmers, WASH practitioners, program and WASH cluster coordinators, uh, market and other professionals with an interest in monitoring and evaluation. Um, and that would include other sector practitioners because we have, uh, through our discussions with our colleagues and people from other agencies, we came to a realization that um, this is something that is uh, useful for other sectors as well. Um, could I ask anybody who's not um, speaking uh, if you could mute your uh, phone, uh, phone, sorry, mute your mic. Thank you. Okay, um, so I will hand over now um, to Christoph, I believe. Yes. Christoph, you should now be in control of the presentation. So thank you very much, Christoph. Over to you. So Christoph um, is based in Canada uh, and along with Rizika, um, are the two key consultants for the, for the presentations. Thank you. I will now mute my Okay. Own. Oh, hello, hello. I'm just struggling to get the presentation up, but for the rest, everything is fine. So I'll present the generic framework and its indicators uh, briefly, uh, not in full detail, but there is enough documentation you can look at. So just to reiterate, we look at the effectiveness of the humanitarian response, the efficiency as in comparing different modalities and the different ways in which it is provided. Uh, we look at, or we have the possibility to be looking at if the distributions are equitable for women, vulnerable groups. Uh, also over time, we can uh, verify the indicators and more important because it is about market recovery, if that market really has recovered. There are a couple of assumptions in the framework. We, uh, we assume there is no pre-crisis information, so the framework can be used even if there is no information prior to the crisis. So it would be suitable in most situations, but it will be enriched if you have pre-crisis information, so you can definitely use it. It's not comprehensive as in to foresee all the indicators you would need for any kind of uh, intervention. It's very much a minimum generic set of indicators that allow you to use it in most situations. The essential and critical goods as we use them are the ones defined by those that are delivered by the program and the measuring the sample, the basic sampling unit of measurement is the households, although a lot of the indicators uh, are by person. 
So if we look at the market-based programming framework, we work on the three bottom quadrants. So the framework doesn't really cover reform of market policies, norms and rules. So what we did is we made a logic uh, uh, model in which, not surprisingly, the overarching goals are effective humanitarian wash response and resilience of markets for critical and essential goods. And from there on, we went to outcomes, outputs, activities, and inputs. So you will have this framework in more detail within the documents that were created for this. And we looked at three possible scenarios. So just to make sure that everything was covered, uh, a pre-crisis market strength activities without a crisis, which if you do preparative work and you need to collect data, you will often have. A pre-crisis market strengthening activity that informs a response delivery. So you have information prior and post and can use the framework. And then mainly three where the focus was is, can you use the framework in a response without pre-crisis activities? And we looked at three kinds of market engagement, use, support, and development. And so the framework covers all these market engagements, but focuses mainly on scenario three, but is applicable to one and two, which have pre-crisis market information. So focus is a minimum set of indicators to monitor. Global accepted standards, so there is no discussion about these. Very much practical, measurable uh, indicators and the disaggregation over gender, poverty, social economical factors, and also over time. So you can create time series. These are the indicators, again, set in the same logical framework. The, the aim is not to read them in detail here. You'll find them back in the documents, but we will go over the main groups. So what we found was that uh, defining them in groups of outputs and outcomes, although that is important towards reporting, um, it's not a division that is practically very easy to make in the field. And so, we propose four groups, which is uh, indicators for market recovery, quality of delivery, efficiency, and access to wash. And in total, we have 17 generic indicators. Seven of those are composites, meaning that they depend on multiple questions in the surveys, and 10 are direct indicators, meaning they depend on one question. So the idea is to briefly go over these. The, compost, uh, the composite indicators are uh, suppliers who recover their trade. So there is, the beneficiaries are satisfied with the available goods, the quality of the response, and the access to wash indicators as in Sphere, they have multiple components to each of those indicators. And they have like we said before, uh, formulated so that we can allow disaggregation, gender, modality, the time, so we can create time series. Uh, we can also uh, distinguish between supported and non-supported beneficiaries or suppliers. As in a market-based intervention, you would assume that even the non-supported suppliers or beneficiaries would benefit from the intervention. So I'll start with market recovery. We're using market-based programming. So the use of market-based programming means that beneficiaries can purchase their essential goods and services, that there is a non-interrupted uh, supply of affordable goods. So for the market recovery, we struggle a bit to define this, but for the purpose of monitoring, we looked at the market share, the market volume, 
the income of the for the suppliers and if this is a sustainable income and their ability to meet consumer demand so we look at it if those are equal or higher than the pre-crisis situation the proportion of uh, supported traders so we look at who provide quality of goods who trades essential and critical goods and maintained or recover their business during the crisis um, we look we also directly ask if they benefit from market support activities and do they have access to funding which is not only the funding provided by the program but other funding as well so for example some of the questions we ask is at this moment can you supply all people who turn to you for wash goods and services can you supply everybody that comes and ask you are at this moment are you able to source all the necessary supplies so for the quality of delivery we look at the effectiveness for the purpose of monitoring to the degree to which the outputs have successfully been produced so did they provide the services and uh, was the service of a sufficient quality and we ask that at the uh, level of the supplier as well as at the consumer so it's not one view so the indicators are percentages of the quality of response availability affordability quality we also look at the average duration of unavailability of supplies and both from the supplier side as well as from the uh, user side we look also at price fluctuations knowing that that is not an easy indicator and you have to be careful with how to interpret that one so examples of questions are uh, this is at the household level when I needed goods and services where they're available or not available even when they're available where they're easy to get or not you can have situations in which products are easy but the whole system of vouchers or the access or the distance to the shop where you can use your voucher might be a challenge for your users so those aspects are taken into account for efficiency we look to the degrees in which inputs and, act and our activities achieve the desired output and we look mainly at cost efficiencies and these are relatively simple indicators uh, cost per beneficiary and the cost delivery ratio so how much is the cost of the goods you delivered and how much was the cost of delivering those goods so for those you need the actual program cost the number of direct beneficiaries and the number of indirect beneficiaries Then as last, you have your traditional uh, wash access indicators. These are the proportion of targeted populations with water services, sanitation services, hand wash, hand wash facilities, menstrual hygiene materials. And many of those have actually multiple questions that relate to those indicators. And that's the last slide so now I have to be able to hand over back to Jonathan right thank you very much Christoph um, so uh, we can pause here in the presentation um, this is correct isn't it the next the next stage of the presentation is around the ICT tools yes that's right. for Rodita shall I hand over to Rodita already and then you can lead the discussion yeah that's fine um, so, um, yeah, we have some opportunity now for any uh, questions. If you want to type those questions into the text box or 
raise your hand and then you would um, unmute your microphone um, and then pose your question to either myself or to Christoph. The floor is yours. I'm very interested to hear your reactions or your responses to the proposed framework and indicators being presented. Um, so, um, hello, everybody. Um, thank you, Jonathan. And uh, uh, can we just 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 give an opportunity oh. in case there's any questions? If there's no questions, we'll, oh, sorry. Uh, we'll carry on. Okay. But, uh, just thought we'd okay. uh, give our participants just time to think if they want to raise any questions. If not, we will proceed. Am I missing any questions? No. Okay then, Rosika. Sorry for the interruption. I just um, thought we'd uh, give opportunity for any questions, but uh, do please carry on. Thank you. Okay. Well, um, thank you, Jonathan, and thank you, Christoph. My name is Rosica Yachimovic. So I will present to you uh, in uh, in this uh, assignment um, the tools that we select and the way how can we implement this uh, framework. So uh, one of the activities uh, within this assignment was to, um, well, that was more like a work package to <clears throat> uh, develop uh, tools with which uh, the framework can be uh, implemented. So in terms of process, how it uh, uh, happened, we first review different uh, ICT tools at the end of last year and agree with Oxfam uh, on the tool selection. And uh, then we developed those tools this year between April and July, uh, tested with the demo data set and different scenarios and develop a generic reporting template in August this year. At the end, uh, we also tested uh, this uh, framework with um, data from interventions in Zimbabwe and South Sudan. Well, when it comes to uh, selected uh, tools, we choose Survey CTO for data collection and uh, Microsoft Power BI for data analysis and reporting. Uh, of course, both those tools have uh, advantages and uh, disadvantages. Uh, some of advantages for uh, Survey CTO is that it's a cloud-based pl platform that many people are familiar with, that it uses ODK as um, a data collection tool on mobile, uh, but also uh, they data can be submitted via web forms. It has really very elaborated and complex uh, question skip logic that we uh, wanted to have uh, for this framework. Uh, and it, in general, it's a well-supported and complete package. Uh, when it comes to my Microsoft BI, it's a freeware. It's also cloud-based. Um, it can provide um, single uh, interactive um, uh, rich reports from different databases and those reports uh, can be viewed on uh, web and on your mobile if you want and yeah it is one uh, uh, business intelligence uh, pretty powerful uh, tool with loads of data sources uh, connectors uh, there are also of course some uh, disadvantages for service CTO is uh, basically a limited um, uh, support for longitudinal data collection uh, and also limited analysis that is available at the, at the platform. And for Power BI is the difference between functionalities on uh, web interface and desktop, computer desktop interface, uh, and also the fact that it's a Windows, um, a Microsoft Office um, product, then um, it works good on Windows, but it's difficult to use in other operational systems. I want to show you in next few, fly, few slides a little bit about how our um, uh, reporting template uh, look for this uh, framework. On your screen now you can see a Power BI uh, desktop interface and you can notice that uh, it looks a little bit similar like uh, Excel, not exactly, but um, uh, a little bit. It works with the uh, navigation tabs in the lower ribbon that you can see on the bottom of the screen 
screen um, uh, in which uh, we dedicate each tab for uh, one uh, indicator. Then on the right hand side, you can see different uh, data that you can data sets actually and sources that you can uh, use and that can be stored in various locations. Uh, you can also uh, see uh, in the middle uh, section the visualization uh, and analysis that Power BI is offering uh, and also um, page level filters which is really good um, uh, functionality of this uh, software especially when you have a complex uh, question uh, logic in your uh, data collection tool and you have the analysis uh, window uh, in the middle. Um, then uh, in each uh, tab you have uh, data filters. Uh, the, we, we develop those for each indicator and you can find it in the lower right hand uh, uh, corner. Um, now I want to show you really quickly an example of one indicator <clears throat> uh, where I want to show uh, the functionalities that Power BI is offering and the way how a person can actually look at the data that is uh, here. So as I said, it provides really rich uh, reports with a lot of data here in this uh, case uh, that is related to the indicator uh, about proportion of traders who report benefiting from market support activities. Uh, you can see basically that we had in this example that is based on demi data set, partner one and partner two involved in the same intervention and they achieve some results. Um, this is the aggregation of the um, uh, data that is coll collected with different uh, with uh, uh, questions that you can see in the pie charts and then what we call um, uh, data um, uh, filters in the lower uh, corner uh, is uh, uh, are pie charts that we use to look more in detail uh, of the data whether you want to look at the baseline end line um, or if there is a, a socioeconomic um, status uh, that if data is collected you can look uh, on uh, different um, uh, poverty levels and so on. So for example in, in this case uh, we wanted to look um, how the traders and the suppliers that receive um, um, so that receive support during the crisis did. So what you need to do is to click basically on uh, this black area of the chart indicating that those are suppliers that receive uh, support during the crisis. And then you can immediately see that um, a partner two work with those suppliers uh, and supported 12 of them. You can see that 11 out of those 12, for example, said that uh, assistance had positive uh, effect on the business. Um, nine out of uh, these 12 um, suppliers said that the support was enough uh, to keep business operating uh, and that it was suitable. Also, um, you can see that eight out of those 12 um, suppliers uh, said that they feel better equipped to face challenges in the future because of the support they receive. Um, you can also see here in, the, uh, in this corner that uh, this particular partner collect data uh, three times for baseline, midline and endline of the project and that they basically worked with non-poor uh, traders. Um, so uh, what I want to show here actually and in the next slide is that if you want you can click on any of the areas uh, in the charts and graphs on Power BI and the, uh, the analysis will be um, uh, recalculated, uh, well shown, uh, uh, the details of uh, the areas that you selected. So for example, uh, with the same indicator, if you would want to see um, uh, what how partner uh, one did, um, then you can select the area that represent the, the suppliers that uh, report benefiting from market support they receive from this particular partner and then you can see that they um, 
that they um, work with the three um, with the three suppliers basically that they provide the uh, support uh, before the crisis that they work mainly with uh, poor and ultra poor uh, people uh, suppliers sorry then all of them uh, had um, reported positive effect uh, of that assistance on their business that all of them said that it was uh, enough uh, support and that it was suitable and the two of them uh, report that they feel better equipped to face uh, challenges because of the support that they receive. Uh, so yeah, this is just uh, uh, briefly this kind of analysis you can do for every um, uh, indicator and we thought that this kind of uh, uh, connectors in the data in each tab for each indicators is really a uh, nice functionality of this uh, piece of software. Uh, now moving uh, forward, uh, I want to just explain a little bit how we test this uh, framework. We did that with the data uh, that is uh, that was collected by uh, country teams in South Sudan and Zimbabwe. Um, it is uh, important to say that those two programs were focused on the water supply. Uh, and not other areas of uh, WASH and the uh, data was uh, uh, collected um, with the tools that uh, these uh, country teams uh, develop independently from this piece of work. And of course those tools and questionnaires reflect the country specific context and intervention objectives. Uh, and then results that we got from this exercise was that uh, for the baseline in South Sudan that um, uh, for which data was collected in May this year, eight out of 17 generic indicators were relevant. And uh, at this moment, this uh, team is considering a voucher uh, scheme. And if um, they implement that, then uh, 13 generic indicators uh, are relevant uh, uh, in this, uh, for this program. And when we look at, this, at Zimbabwe uh, program, they uh, send us uh, two uh, data sets, one uh, uh, related to <clears throat> pre-crisis market analysis that was collected in October last year and another in post-distribution monitoring that was collected I think February of or March uh, this year and in both cases as you can see 7 out of 17 generic indicators were relevant so we can uh, basically draw conclusion here that generic uh, framework can actually be successfully implemented in these two programs and when we look at more in details among the generic indicators in common across those two programs. We saw that there are five in common. Out of these five, it was four related to a market uh, recovery. It was one, um, uh, it was indicator um, about price fluctuation, a portion of service provider with access to funding and portion of uh, service provider which uh, trade recover after the event and cost per beneficiary was also uh, possible to calculate for both uh, uh, programs. Um, when we also look a bit more into details of the tools that both country uh, used, of course the questions were uh, differently framed and um, uh, also reflected the local context but it was obvious that there is um, a, a need to collect similar or maybe even same kind of information. Uh, and then when we also look uh, um, at our uh, tools, tools that we develop for this uh, framework, we conclude that uh, generic questionnaires for these generic indicators can help really uh, teams to formulate effective survey questions in the future. Now, Talking about the future of this uh, uh, framework and tools, we basically consider framework um, being a living document and we hope that it will be regularly updated through various uh, revisions and that will uh, yeah, generate interest. Um, uh, well, yeah, but to 
that for document to be uh, uh, to leave, uh, then there, the a process need to be uh, set to promote um, uh, learning and feedback loops, not only in organization but also among partners. And yeah, a mandate needs to be given uh, for somebody to facilitate and guide the process. Uh, it is. Um, Important to say that uh, we are now in the final stage of uh, producing outputs and that all of them will be available uh, at EMA Toolkit uh, website that you can see here, link. Um, um, and we will keep you posted, of course, um, about um, uh, release of those outputs. So that means that generic framework, uh, ICT tool um, uh, forms and user guideline will be available available uh, if people wants to use it and if you would have any questions or comment or request uh, here is the list of contact of the people that have been involved in this assignment consultants and uh, Oxfam uh, staff which you can uh, reach out and uh, uh, ask or uh, send your feedback and request and yeah we will be happy to help you thank you very much for your attention now, Jonathan, back to you. Thank you very much indeed, Ruzika, and uh, thank you, Christoph, for your, your presentations. Um, so you'll see a, a very uh, comprehensive uh, set of indicators uh, which have what we believe widespread application. Um, can be, they're, they're recommended, uh, that we're putting them forward to the sector as um, the minimum sort of requirements for monitoring. Um, but there is opportunity in further piloting and application um, of the framework and the indicators uh, to update them. They can, it could be updated for your own individual purposes, um, for your own programs, um, but we are keen to sort of maintain a certain um, standardization of, of indicators to enable us to have information from programs which does enable some comparison. Um, and this is really uh, critical as we move forward to, to have that because we do recognize that um, programs, there's a lot of proposed benefits of market-based programming, um, but we haven't um, got a comprehensive um, base of information to be able to say whether under what circumstances, what conditions, different types of intervention are in fact more beneficial from the perspective of the effective communities. Um, there is so, such a wide variety of different types of intervention, there is such a wide variety of contexts in which uh, those interventions may be applied. It's a very challenging piece of work, um, so I certainly think that the work that the consultants have presented today um, is a very important step forward. Um, and, and, and I congratulate them both for the, for the work they've put into this. I know they've dedicated a, a lot of time into this. Um, and even on the ICT tools, you, um, the presentation would not ref, doesn't truly reflect the extensive work that they did in reviewing the different types of ICT tools, um, trying a couple, um, and before finally agree, we agreeing on the ones that have been put forward today, which is the survey CTO and the, the Power BI. Um, I'm interested to hear if anyone has had experience of monitoring and evaluation um, of WASH programs, uh, potentially with a market-based programmatic approach, but not necessarily. Um, I would like to hear from anybody who has some program experience, if they could perhaps comment on, on what they've heard today, do they see potential in using this within programs um, or not, as the case may be? Um, I'd be very keen to hear from you. Uh, I'd be very keen to hear from anybody who um, sees, sees the application in other sectors. This is, we're putting this forward particularly for WASH. Um, but it is would be potentially applicable for other sectors with some changes to um, the indicators and there is some guidance and information about that uh, forthcoming. Um, as Rosika said, um, we will be uploading the relevant documents to um, the EMMA toolkit so you will have full access to those um, 
tiles. Um, any questions at this stage? I would like to pick on a few people, but I'm not, because I'm going to be nice today. Resounding silence must mean you are all amazingly impressed. Good. Well, that's excellent. Um, if there are honestly no questions, I will just give a few more seconds for you to reflect. If you wanted to go back to any particular slide, if you were not, not uh, clear about one particular bit of the presentation, just put the message into the chat box or raise your hand. And ah, it's, so um, I think we have, oh. I realise now that uh, we have a colleague here, uh, Abdirizak Kontoma. Your hand's been raised for a long time, I believe. Uh, are you still there? In which case, could you... Uh, you are now unmuted. Could you, do you have a question that you'd like to raise? Yes, I have a question. Are you getting me? Yes, we can hear you. Yes, thank you. And I have another. Okay, fine. Now we have another question. Uh, I'm, I'm working. I'm working for the Kenya program, and uh, currently implementing an emergency water tracking, and uh, I'm trying to use the markets in responding to the the, the water needs in regards to tracking. My question is. How the, the procurement processes within Oxfam or generally organizations in regards to the quick intervention that you normally uh, want to, to carry out. I find that the, the bureaucracy, uh, the policies are not friendly when it comes to emergency response, especially when you have gone to the market and people need water, you just identify some few vendors. But the question is, are we going in the right direction in regards to the procurement side. Are the procurement policies uh, developed to be friendly towards emergency? Hello? Hello, thank you very much for your question. Um, I mean, that's it's a much broader question. Um, I'm not sure that our consultants would be in a position to respond particularly on that one, do you just well, let, me, let me ask the, the first before I come back to Christoph, do you have any? <clears throat> no, the framework as it was, was uh, particularly developed for emergencies and uh, to cover humanitarian needs. So in that way it is, but it's hard to assess if it would cover exactly your needs, uh, your particular needs, but it is, it is. It was meant for humanitarian activities. So, in that sense, yes. Jonathan, thank you very much, Christoph. Um, did you did you want to come back on that one in relation to the um, the response? I mean, I, th I think the issue you raise is a very relevant one, um, but I. I'm a little bit challenged to see how the, the indicator framework could specifically address the issue that you raise. Um, if anyone else wants to come back on that one, please do. I believe I've got some. Ah, I've now. I can. Well, I've. I can't. I've got a com. I've got a comment here from. Um, colleague Catrice King for Save the Children. Patrice, um, I think we're going to have to ask you to, uh, if you can, audio input, please, because I can't see your comment. I'm afraid. Hang on, let me just make you there. You can talk now if you possibly can, Patrice. Uh, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Sorry, I couldn't get your message. Perfect. Yeah, no, I was just saying that, uh, I mean, using the tool, the survey CTO, that use ODK is, is a good one because I think a lot of 
agencies uh, use assessments using ODK. So I think it's a platform that people are used to using, which is, which is great. Um, and we also have uh, a lot of requests from the field um, trying to find ways to present this data in a more you know, interesting visual way. Uh, and so having you know, this MS Power BI tool is, is really, really good, really useful. Um, so in terms of the tools themselves, um, it looks, you know, you've gone in the right direction from, from my point of view. Um, the one thing I was trying to ask you on the questions box, I'm not sure if you're receiving the questions, um, is that you, you suggested that there are a certain number of indicators, generic indicators, um, sees the framework is successfully used. So I wanted to understand what is the cutoff or how many generic indicators makes it successful. Um, obviously, you had eight for the South Sudan context and seven uh, with Zimbabwe, if I'm not quoting wrong. Um, so that's one question. And the second one is, is just a bit more detail on, on the outputs of that from those two countries. You know, how did those countries use that information from those indicators? Was it did it success? Did it change anything in their programs? Those are my two questions. So, Jonathan, shall I answer that? Or uh, yes, please. You... Uh, sorry, I was a little bit distracted yeah. because I've just realised why I couldn't see the um, questions. Yeah, do carry on. Um, we'll come back to the questions here on the text box. Here. Thanks. Okay. The the generic framework covers uh, water, sanitation, hygiene, uh, different activities in wash. And if one of these activities is not implemented in within a program, then obviously those indicators are not relevant. So the idea was to look at for the parts that the framework covered where the indicators relevant and. That was what we looked at. It's not so much the number, and there is no particular cutoff. It was just uh, did the wash indicators covers the wash activities of those programs. The two programs that we looked at didn't collect the data, especially for the framework or with the indicators that we defined within the framework. So it was more a uh, retroactive look and, and fitting if that, that fitted uh, within the framework. Um, and so there is nothing being done after looking at the data, with the exception of South Sudan, because they will have an, an intervention with vouchers and they might then uh, rely on the framework and the, its generic indicators to use those 13 out of 17 that are relevant uh, for their program. So, so yeah, the answer is there's no particular cutoff. It's just looking at are the activities covered in the framework uh, relevant for the programs that we looked at, and uh, there has not yet been a follow-up. Uh, we created a document to look at how the next step would be for the framework to be implemented and used. But during the making of the framework, a lot of um, countries indicated that they would be helped by having some basis to start from. Thank you. Jonathan? Yes, thank you, Christoph. Yeah, if I can, uh, if I can just uh, uh, quickly add, uh, yeah, well, uh, we conclude that uh, it was uh, su successful, but indeed there is no uh, cutoff in number of indicators. Uh, what we look uh, at um, was also if, for example, in Zimbabwe case, since they have data for from PCMA and then data for uh, post-distribution monitoring, uh, and they had different set of tools for PCMA uh, household survey and post-distribution monitoring household survey. And um, we thought that maybe if they would have a generic questionnaire at that time, they, they would be helped with uh, uh, consistent uh, uh, questions uh, 
that refers to indicators that is relevant to their uh, program and that could also be uh, beneficial for uh, analysis and then the comparison maybe would be um, uh, easier to do than if you have uh, uh, different tools developing those two um, times of the of the program so i hope that clarification you know helps a bit <laughs> thank you very much uh, so um i've got some other questions here. I'll run through a few of them and then maybe go back to the consultants um, for some further explanations. Uh, first of all, I apologize because I was looking in the chat box for questions and I've been receiving messages saying, why are you not receiving my question? Uh, so I'm looking in the wrong place, I'm afraid. So now, um, so um, I had a question here um, from Kit um, from um, NCA. Um, um, Kit, you were asking about the quality um, service delivery, um, and very much so that was um, there are a set of indicators which are focusing on quality of service delivery, which are essentially around uh, beneficiary satisfaction. Um, so those mirror, I think, something perhaps um, to explain in the framework is that the, uh, there are it's looking at the perspectives from uh, the implementing agency perspective so that would from our side it would be Oxfam as, as the NGO and um, as the primary instigator of a, a, a response working with government agencies um, the other side would be the um, affected community um, and the third sort of angle to the framework uh, monitoring framework of course in the, in the market base uh, approach is working with existing service providers um, and service chain um, uh, actors. Um, so on the on the service delivery quality side, it's very much about questions directed towards uh, the uh, beneficiaries, the affected communities, to assess their perception of the quality of delivery, and there are a range of different criteria to address. Um, I'm just going to look at a couple of other questions here. Um, um, there's a question about the application in terms of the timing. Um, as our consultants presented, um, it's, the framework is not dependent on having pre-crisis data set, um, but it would be beneficial to do so. So if we're working I could see the best application for that would be in a, in a, in a context where there's a reoccurring crisis um, and there's an opportunity to collect some data one year, um, potentially not the full set of data, um, but then as, as we are on a regular basis responding to a recurring crisis, we have an opportunity uh, to collect some um, standardized indicators and build up a more of a comprehensive uh, understanding of how effective and efficient our interventions are within that context and if we are as a as a community and a sector if we are adopting a common set of indicators and we are very open to we're not saying that this is set in stone um, but we are putting this forward to the sector as, as a as a big step forward um, to suggest that we could use some of these as the basis for that common understanding. Um, and, and so it could be used pre-crisis and it would be beneficial to have data pre-crisis, but it can, you can essentially start, pick up on this framework and apply it pretty much at any stage of the framework. And depending on the type of intervention, some of the indicators will be more, more, um, more important than others. Um, Tracy, um, Tracy Wise um, has some questions here. Uh, Tracy's from, from OFTA, who's the funder, um, so thanks to OFTA for the funding. Um, were any of the four indicator areas not represented in the South Sudan and Zim exercises? Um, yes, I think that the, well, the answer is yes. Do, do Christoph or Rizika, do you want to elaborate on in response to that question? Were any of the four indicator areas not represented in the South Sudan and Zim exercises? Do you have have told us that, um, uh, that the, only some of the indicators were applicable or we only had information for 
some of the indicators. Were any of the indicator areas not represented at all um, by that? Yes, I think the best person would be Rosita to answer that. Um, um, uh, thank you, uh, Christoph. Um, well, uh, for the case of um, for the case of Zimbabwe, I think uh, that I'm I'm now uh, just thinking very uh, hard. Actually, I think that all four groups were uh, represented, and that their um, uh, among those seven indicators, well, obviously uh, that there were an indicator on on wash, and then uh, quality of efficiency. They um, they cover indicators. Price price fluctuation is there, and um, um, Zimbabwe had um, beneficiary satisfaction with the quality of delivery, for example. Um, um, and then uh, market recovery, as I said, it was a portion of, of providers uh, that um, uh, have access to funding and which uh, trade recover. And then efficiency group, it was cost per beneficiary. So yes, yeah, all four uh, group of indicators uh, were there, yeah. Um, and a follow-up question from Tracy was, um, are the four indicators not applicable out of the South Sudan that this is in particular reference to, um, are the four indicators mostly concentrated in one of the larger areas such as market resilience? Um, I uh, have to hand back to the consultants to say the specific response um, for South Sudan, um, but certainly um, in a general response to that question is, is for sure uh, certain types of intervention uh, if we look at the different types of market-based programmatic intervention, namely market use, work, uh, market support, and market development, uh, we're finding that, um, or, or otherwise referred to as market system change, similar sort of uh, terminology, but that type of uh, intervention categorization uh, seems to be a, a good way of conveying the different types of intervention um, and, and, and the ones which are on market system change or market development um, are much more likely to be pre-crisis activity or, or potentially post-disaster rehabilitation um, and provide more opportunity for the more uh, systematic type of market engagement which enables um, resilience, strengthening the market for future reoccurring crises um, and those indicators for that particular area would be more applicable then as opposed to a market use uh, intervention, which is very much um, uh, quite often quite a conventional standardized emergency response where we could be potentially just contracting market actors to be delivering services on our behalf. And that's still a form of market-based programming, um, even though um, we see that as quite a essentially quite a, I suppose, a basic one. Um, so I don't, um, I think we come back to you, Tracy, um, because that's quite detailed about South Sudan. Just to mention that South Sudan was more about water, uh, water quantity, whereas um, the Zimbabwe case is much more about uh, water guard as a, as a household water treatment. So that's much more about water quality. Um, time for a few more questions. Um, uh, Alexandre uh, Kolech, um, you ask about have we shared the indicators? Um, as mentioned, these uh, we, obviously we have these in draft form, but we want to, we're just formatting the documents um, prior to upload to the Emma toolkit. So as soon as they're done, we send out to communicate to you all, um, so you'll be able to access them. So this will be open access, um, and you are very welcome to use them. Um, and we'd very much like to hear back from you um, about your experiences. Um, Lucia Latino, uh, she would like to know um, a little bit more about the indicators used for monitoring and evaluation. In particular, do you suggest using different indicators according to the type of market engagement in the intervention? Uh, I think uh, implicitly I've, I've answered that um, in, in, in the previous.
previous response, the answer is essentially yes. Um, there are certain indicators which are more appropriate for those different levels of market engagement. I think I've, um, I think I've probably answered that already. Um, would anybody else, have I missed any questions? Um, or is there any final questions um, before we close? I can see we're losing a few people, so it's always good. To, we had an hour and a half for this, but it's always good to close a bit early, of course, if we can. Um, we could, uh, we, you know, if you want to follow up with any questions subsequently, then, then please do contact us. Um, I'm just having a look to see if there's any, any further questions. So just going back to the first question, Abdira Zak's question, um, yeah, that's it's a really complicated one, I'm afraid. We, I don't feel like we've satisfactorily addressed your question, I'm afraid, but I'm not sure we're in the, in the right position to um, your service delivery. Uh, what were the criteria to determine which indicators were relevant in the pilots? Um, that was there, that's a question from Astrid de Vallon. Um, um, I'm going, to, I'm going to put that last question I will put to the consultants for me. Would one of you be able to respond to that question? Could, what were the criteria? What were the criteria to determine which indicators were relevant in the pilots? In in the in, in South Sudan, pilots we looked yeah no no in the pilots we looked at uh, which questions were asked in uh, as similar manner as the ones we had in the framework to determine which questions were in the framework was based on literature review and examples of uh, programs that were uh, market-based uh, programs and looked at the commonalities of all these indicators so and then once we had decided on the indicators we looked at as many scenarios as possible to see if they remained um, relevant so we could include them in the generic um, framework um, it, yeah explaining it in more detail would take us a bit away from the aim of the presentation but it is quite well documented in the documents that will become available thank you um, Catrice was asking, um, how did the two programs use the information produced from the generic indicators? Um, very good question. Um, I think as uh, Christoph has already mentioned, there is, um, well both, well there's more op specific opportunity I believe in South Sudan um, at the moment, um, but we're also keen for our colleagues in Zimbabwe um, to, to use this information um, but it's we you know we're not in a position to to kind of impose this uh, we can only advise and I know there is strong interest from Zimbabwe um, but we're coming to the end of the current um, funding of this project so it would really depend on being able to apply this within uh, an ongoing uh, project, and, and that's why South Sudan is, is probably has more potential at the moment for that for that reason. Um, Fernando um, Peneta, thank you for your question. Um, again, um, the question was about the application in relation to the disaster cycle, um, immediate first phase through early recovery. If we're not first on the ground, but second or third, is it still applicable? Uh, yes, it is applicable, um, and this would be a good example if we um, think about different NGOs working in a response. Um, this question does raise the uh, issue that we, in a way, that we're trying to address is, which is having um, more consistency and standardisation in indicators. So it does become beneficial for different agencies to be using similar, uh, or preferably the same indicators um, that provides a much better basis for a program. Um, I think hopefully we've covered the questions now. Sorry for the delay in um, 
seeing your questions and thank you all for for those questions. I think we're closed now. Uh, we've had um, over an hour and ten minutes. Do please uh, contact us if you have any um, further questions. Look out for the uh, framework and the guidance documents on um, the Emma Toolkit website. Um, and I'd just like to close by saying thanks very much to uh, Christoph and Ruzika for all their, their hard efforts. They've done a fantastic job and we're very, very pleased with their final outputs. And so thank you both. Um, and thank you both today for your very eloquent presentations. Okay, thank you and goodbye.